Lesson 140. Only salvation can be said to cure. Cure is a word that cannot be applied to any remedy. The word accepts as beneficial. What the word perceives as therapeutic is but what will make the body better. When it tries to heal the mind, it sees no separation from the body, where it thinks that mind exists. exists. Its forms of healing thus must substitute illusion for illusion. One belief in sickness takes another form, and so the patient now perceives himself as well. He is not healed. He merely had a dream that he was sick, and in the dream he found a magic formula to make him well. Yet he has not awakened from the dream, and so his mind remains exactly as it was before. He has not seen the light that would awaken him and end the dream. What difference does the content of a dream make in reality? One either sleeps or wakens. There is nothing in between. The happy dream the Holy Spirit brings are different from the dreaming of the world, where one can merely dream he is awake. The dreams of forgiveness lets the mind perceive do not induce another form, form of sleep, so that the dreamer dreams another dream. His happy dreams are her heralds of the dawn of truth upon the mind. They lead from sleep to gentle waking, so that dreams are gone, and thus they cure for all eternity. Atonement heals with certainty and cures all sickness. For the mind which understands that sickness can be nothing but a dream is not deceived by forms the dream may take. Sickness where guilt is absent cannot come for it is but another form of guilt. Atonement does not heal the sick, for that is not a cure. It takes away the guilt that makes the sickness possible, and that is cure indeed. For sickness now is gone, with nothing left to which it can return. Peace be to you who have been cured in God, and not in idle dreams. For cure must come from holiness, and holiness cannot be found where sin is cherished. God abides in holy temples. He is buried where sin has entered, yet there is no place where he is not, and therefore sin can have no home in which to hide from his beneficence. There is no place where holiness is not and nowhere sin and sickness can abide. This is, this is the thought that cures. It does not make decisions among unrealities, nor does it seek to heal what is not sick, unmindful where the need for healing is. This is no magic. It is merely an appearance to truth which cannot fail to heal and heal forever. It is not a thought that judges an illusion by its size, its seeming gravity, or anything that is related to the form it takes. It merely focuses on what it is and knows that no illusion can be real. Let us not try today to seek to cure what cannot suffer sickness. Healing must be sought but where it is, and then applied to what is sick, so that it can be cured. There is no remedy the word provides that can affect a change in anything. The mind that brings illusions to the truth is really changed. There is no change but this, for how can one illusion differ from another 
but in attributes that have no substance, no reality, no core, and nothing that is truly different. Today we seek to change our minds about the source of sickness, for we seek a cure for all illusions, not another shift among them. We will try today to find the source of healing, which is in our minds, because our Father place, placed it there for us. It is not farther from us than ourselves. It is not further from us than ourselves. It is as near to us as our own thoughts, so close, it is impossible to lose. We need but seek it and it must be found. We will not be mi misled today, but what appears to us as seek. We go beyond appearances today and reach the source of healing, from which nothing is exempt. We will succeed to the extent to which we realize that there can never be a meaningful di distinction made between what is untrue and equally untrue. Here there are no degrees and no beliefs that what does not exist is truer in some forms than others. All of them are false and can be cured because they are not true. So do we lay aside our amulets or our charms and medicines, our chants and beads of magic in whatever form they take, we will be still and listen for the voice of healing, which will cure or else as one, restoring senseless of the Son of God. No voice, but this can cure. Today we hear a single voice which speaks to us of truth, where all illusions end, and peace returns to the eternal, quiet home of God. We wake and hear him and let him speak to us five minutes as the day begins and end the day by listening again five minutes more before we go to sleep. Our only preparation is to let our interfering thoughts be laid aside, not separately but all of them as one. They are the same. We have no need to make them different and thus delay the time when we can hear our Father speak to us. We hear Him now. We come to Him today. With nothing in our hands to which we cling, with lifted hearts and listening minds we pray. Only salvation can be said to cure. Speak to us, Father, that we may be healed. And we will feel salvation cover us with soft protection and with peace so deep that no illusion can disturb our minds, nor offer proof to us that it is real. This will we learn today, and we will say our prayer for healing hourly and take a minute as the hour strikes to hear the answer to our prayer be given us as we attend in silence and in joy. This is the day when healing comes to us. This is the day when separation ends and we remember who we really are. Lesson 140 only salvation can be said to cure.
Lesson 140 Only salvation can be said to cure.